So welcome for this new pre WWDC interview. This time my guest is Carola Nitz. Welcome, Carola. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you for being here. So maybe if you can introduce yourself so that people can know what you do and uh, the kind of app that you work on. Yeah, of course. So I'm Carola. I've been an iOS developer since 2012. I'm currently working as a senior software engineer at Netflix and have in the past worked a lot on VLC, the open source media player. Okay, so interview is going to be like the previous one. So I have three questions for you, which are the same for everyone. And then one question that is more specific to your experience working on the VLC app. So my first question is, if you had one wish, what would you wish for at WWDC 2021? Oh, this is an exciting one. I think we've done a lot of like headway in the AR space. And also with spatial audio, for me, like a natural next step would be Apple glasses, you know, to just combine all of these um, steps that we've taken in the past. And yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Like we see a lot of announcements using AR kits and it's true that they make for nice demos, but you don't see yourself like maybe using them like over time for a long time because having like an iPad or an iPhone and held It's yep. not the most comfortable. And there, and there have been so many VR headsets out there now, and Apple's the last one to like take it to the next level. It's true. It's true, but we can expect like if there is one, we can expect like something like very well polished. That will be the nice part. <laughs> and so maybe more realistically, what do you expect to be announced? <laughs> I think every one of us knows that there's still a little bit of work needed with Swift UI, especially in combination with UI Kit. So I'm really hoping that they can polish a couple of those um, interactions between the two. Um, but also more, I hope that they really leverage the previews that we're having with Swift UI. Um, you can, for example, see different dynamic types um, like next to each other, or maybe you could even have different locales so that you can speed up your development. I would really, really hope that they do something like that. It's what it would be very exciting. And when you think about previews, It kind of reminds of uh, Swift Playgrounds because the potential is here, but then it's in the execution and in the fact that they must work like reliably uh, over time, basically. Absolutely. And so maybe is there also an announcement that you would be particularly scared of because it would like either break something or change your plan for some project? <laughs> well, I think everyone is also scared about breaking changes like we've had in the past, I don't know, them deprecating something that I'm using all over the app, or I don't know, that crashes particularly my app. I actually remember when we had VLC um, working with certain video types, we would crash the new iPhone, <laughs> like kernel panic it. So that would be my worst nightmare because everybody blamed VLC. <laughs> It's true, it's always a bit like unexpected and the bigger the app you're working on and when it's app very specific, like about playing videos, there is a lot of APIs that uh, most developers we are not aware of, but if they break, uh, they can break in a very bad way. Yeah, absolutely. And so you said that you've contributed a lot to the iOS VLC app and I was wondering, what's the impact of WWDC when you work on a popular open source app? Oh, it's interesting because you actually get to adopt the new technologies immediately and you can show it to everybody and be like, look at my code, right? If you work at a bigger company with proprietary code, you cannot go around and be like, look what we have done because it might end up somewhere in the news. But with VLC, it's super easy to try it out and learn and share it with everybody and the community and get their input if you're doing it right. Or even for like finding bugs and showing it to Apple and be like, look, here's the open source code. If I'm doing something wrong, you can check it out and you can tell me what I'm doing wrong. And here's my, my feedback bug radar. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I had the same uh, feedback from Kaya Thomas that when you work on a big app, often you will do some proof of concept, uh, but you have like no guarantee that it will actually be shipped in production. And uh, it's very hard to show it outside and to share the code. Yeah, with open source, that's definitely one of the big benefits. And I think that could be also a nice advice for people who are watching is that if you're working on a big app and you want to try something and you feel like you're not going to be able to share it as easily, well, maybe 
try it on a smaller scale in a small open source project and uh, maybe it could be a better way like for you to try out the new feature absolutely it's also great for the community just to dabble around in like different projects right yeah because when a feature is new even if your implementation is simple well there are not that many implementations available so even something simple it's a different perspective than the example from apple so it already has a, a good deal of value yes well, thank you. Thanks a lot, Carola. So we'll see what gets announced in a, in a few weeks. And uh, I think we're all super excited to see what we will have to, to play with as developers for the coming month. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, see you next time, guys.